These sunglasses feel like I'm wearing a stereo. Let's talk about them. Hey folks, Norb here. I love going out hiking and cycling, and, and when I'm doing that, I don't like to cover my ears for safety reasons. Enter the Rocket IQ. When Rocket contacted me about these, I was intrigued. Just a quick note that Rocket sent me these in exchange for the review. They had no input into the conclusions and did not get to preview this. All opinions are my own. Now, you have things like sunglasses by certain other companies that have earbuds attached to them. So you'll put them on and you put the earbuds in. These don't do that. They're just standard sunglass legs. Uh, that's because they want you to keep that situational awareness, which is what's really important to them. If you're out the, in the park with the kids, for example, or you're out walking alone, you just want to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings at all times. I'm not a fan of covering my ears in public and these solve for that. If you're like me and you wear prescription lenses, take note. They are polarized for better sun protection and if you need prescription lenses, then you can replace these with those. One thing to watch out for with these, however, is the arms. They are definitely on the wide side, which means that your peripheral vision is going to be compromised. If you're wearing these while you're riding a bike, for example, or even driving, then you really want to be careful because that will get in the way of what you can see. Still, it's not something you're not going to get used to. If you're wearing these all the time, then you, know, you don't learn how to look above or below that. And speaking of wide, they're fine for me when I put them on, but my wife, who's smaller than I am, tried them on and she felt they were a little bit too big for her. So keep that in mind, but they're not heavy at all. They're 44.8 grams or about 1.6 ounces. So when I put them on, I barely feel them. And the housing is a soft plastic, which feels great to the touch. These are also IPX4 water resistance. So they'll be fine if you sweat on them or if you're caught in a little bit of rain, don't go into the pool with them, however. So now when you're not using them, you can go ahead and keep them in a nice little hard case that they come with. I thought this was a really nice touch. So with that said, some quick scores. Looks, four out of five. They're fashionable. And honestly, I think they just look great. Design, four out of five. They're lightweight, they feel great, and the ability to add prescription lenses is fantastic. I do wish the legs were a little bit more uh, narrow, a little bit thinner, so that it would help with peripheral vision. By the way, if you're finding this useful, please consider hitting the like button. That's a huge help to this channel. And if you want to see more reviews like this, please be sure to subscribe to Norm Reviews. Now, using these was kind of interesting because they work just like earbuds in a way, meaning that you can use one leg at a time. These do use Bluetooth 5.0, but you can only pair them with one device at a time. To pair with with another device, you're going to have to delete it from the first device. After they are paired, to turn them on, you have to press and hold both buttons for a few seconds in order to turn them both on. Overall, I found the control scheme to be just fine. Press and hold to turn them off, turn them on, to launch your phone's voice assistant, click once to start or stop music and an answer or hang up a call, or click two or three times to skip or restart a song. You can't control the volume using the glasses though. Still, the button feels great and has a really satisfying click. The battery is advertised at up to eight hours at 60% volume or five hours at 100% volume. In my tests, this checked out, definitely satisfied with the battery life on these. To charge these, you use this cable right here. It's a proprietary system, which charges magnetically. Now that I like, I don't like the fact that it's proprietary, but I get it. It's kind of weird though that you have to charge them both separately. So each leg has its own plug. It takes about 90 minutes to top them off. One thing I don't like is that when you're charging them, once you're done and you unplug them, they automatically turn on and connect to that device. This wasn't a bad design choice per se. I can see the usability of it, but I'm not a fan of it. I want them to be explicitly turned on by me and not automatically turn on in any other case. One thing though that I did like surprisingly was that you can still listen to them when they're plugged in, which is kind of weird because you would not think of that being a bonus with sunglasses. But here's the thing, the speakers are actually outward facing. So theoretically, you could in a quiet room, plug these in, turn the volume up to 100% and then just kind of listen to it. It would be again, good for things like audiobook, not necessarily music, unless you really, really, really want your music. Anyway, so my scores, battery, three out of five. I'm decently happy with the battery life and the charging time, but I'm not in love with having to charge each leg separately. Usability, three out of five. It's got a simple control scheme that makes good sense and is clear and easy to use. And I love that I can use one leg at a time, but I would really have liked a volume control on these. So now let's talk about sound. Rocket advertises a 16 millimeter speaker in each leg uh, and the speaker faces outward and downward toward the ear itself. So you'll hear it, but it won't get in the way of whatever's happening around you. But you give up sound quality for that convenience. So I put these sunglasses through my usual test and right away, the impression that I got was, 
I was reminded of when I was a kid. I would always listen to the local classical station because I loved classical music even as a kid. Except sometimes the signal faded for me some and we didn't always get the best reception. There would be the staticky noise in the background, but I didn't care because I just love the music that much. I just wanted that music with me, even with a little static in the background. It's okay, Mozart can handle it. And that's what these sound like. Listening to a radio station that's sometimes just slightly staticky. Still, what these did do well is that with audiobooks and podcasts, they were perfectly fine. In fact, that's what I would use these for. The staticky noise here comes from two places. The first is the speaker volume. Any speaker driven to 100% will face distortion. The company expects you to use these at higher volumes, which means that you're more likely to run into that. The second might be my unit specifically. It broke out of the box, which does call into question some quality control issues. When I took these out of the box uh, and started using them, pretty much immediately I started getting this slight static noise on the speaker uh, on the right leg. It's too quiet to capture on the microphones that I have, but I can definitely hear it. I did contact the company about this, but they couldn't hear it in the recordings that I sent. So clearly it's not overtly broken, but it's still enough to be annoying. And if I had spent my money on this, I'd immediately make use of their 30 day return policy. This does worry me when it comes to longevity and quality control. Longevity is gonna be especially important if you use prescription glasses with these. But here's the thing, even with the flaws in these, what I got out of these is sort of what I expected. They're tiny little speakers next to your ears, playing loud enough so that you can hear them. Rocket advertises a bass boost and it does help round out the sound a little bit, I guess. Mind you, the sound is relatively full for what it is. But back to the volume. It's honestly fine, loud enough to keep you entertained, but don't expect to rock out to these. If you're in a crowd, everyone in your vicinity will be able to hear whatever you're listening to. Like I'm wearing a stereo. That's something I'm not in love with. And if you're talking on the phone, people around you will definitely be able to hear both sides of your conversation. You don't have privacy with these. Again, that's not the point of these though. They're literally speakers facing outward. As for codecs, these handle SBC and AAC. Normally this might actually matter, but really I don't think it matters at all here. Also Rocket advertises a 60 millisecond low latency with these, but it doesn't really matter all that much. So what's the takeaway? On my five point scale, I have to give these a 1.5 out of five for sound. The sound is okay for what it is. Uh, the right leg gets a one because I hate listening to broken speakers, but the left leg gets a whopping two, double the score, because I just didn't like how it sounded. Didn't hate it, just didn't like it. Unfortunately, because these were broken out of the box, I don't know whether I'm being too harsh or cutting too much slack. So that's not to say that these aren't useful, but you need to temper your expectations. The point of these is fashionable convenience. Sound quality is clearly secondary to that. I might bump these up to a three if I'm only considering audiobooks or podcasts. For that, they're fine, they're perfectly understandable, and frankly, the fact that they're so light and convenient, that's great. Now, phone calls are another matter. I actually really like these for phone calls, and it was my favorite thing to do with them. Go out, chat with someone while I'm on a walk. The great thing about these, again, is convenience. I'm sitting there, I'm just walking around, I'm not listening to anything, someone calls, I go ahead and click my glasses, I answer the call right there, click, and I'm done with the call. Fan freaking fantastic. Here's how they sound. You're listening to the sound of the microphones on the Rocket IQ. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And now comparing to run-of-the-mill wire connected earbuds. Notice the difference in sound. Anyway, my score for calls is three out of five. It's not the greatest microphone. Uh, no Bluetooth mic is, but the convenience of calls is absolutely fantastic. Now that part I did love. I'll give that one a five out of five uh, because I'm far more likely to be wearing sunglasses outdoors than I am to be wearing headphones or earbuds. So yeah, this was a good attempt by Rocket. The IQ have a lot to like, but I do have some concerns. Remember, the point of these is convenience. They are convenient. Sound is secondary. Fine for audiobooks and calls and podcasts, but I don't love these for music. If you're getting these because they're convenient and they keep your ears open, and honestly, if you get these for nothing other than phone calls and audiobooks, I think you'll probably be really happy with them. The fact that you can add prescription lenses to them is at least to me, a pretty major bonus. But given the issue that I had with the right speaker, I do have a question about the overall longevity of these, especially if you're going to replace the lenses with prescription lenses.
If you're watching this channel regularly, you know that I'm not just about sound. The most important thing to me is actually the user experience. And while the sound on these isn't all that great, I do really love the convenience. So what about you? Is this something that you'd get or would you just rather have a pair of earbuds or uh, bone conduction headphones and then keep the sunglasses separate? Let me know in the comments below. And again, if you want to go ahead and purchase these, go ahead and use the links that I have below. Uh, they will save you 30%. Yes, they're affiliate links and it does help the channel out, but you get to save money and really that's what matters to you. That's what should matter to you. Anyway, with that, see you next time.